Hello and welcome back everyone to another exciting episode of Two Cam Plays. Well folks, mark your calendars because Monster Jam Showdown has an official release date. Yes, Milestone has announced that Showdown will be released on August 29th, just four and a half months from the date of this recording, with early release starting three days earlier on August 26th for those who pre-order. Speaking of pre-orders, the official website has been updated to include a pre-order section, but as of today, April 12th, those links just say coming soon. So it seems that there are no official ways to pre-order just yet. I still find that sketchy Amazon listing that I mentioned in my last video, but again, I wouldn't trust that listing with my money. So just wait a little bit. I'm sure that official pre-orders are coming very soon. Other updates to the Showdown website include a shot of Megalodon and Gravedigger driving through what appears to be the Colorado environment, which just gets me even more excited to see some actual footage from that zone. This image is labeled a key art, and it looks to me like it's probably gonna be the official box art for the game once it finally releases. There's also a really cool video with some renders of the trucks that we We've seen already in what appears to be an indoor arena. The caption for this video reads, race the current fleet, legendary history making trucks, and the wildest fictional beasts from the toy universe. Okay, given that we already know that there are some of the older trucks like Raising Kane, Big Kahuna, Maximum Destruction, it makes me wonder, you know, what other legendary history making trucks might be included. Leave your speculations in the comments. I want to know what you guys think. It also mentions trucks from the toy universe. Now, of course, we know that that means original Spin Master designs. Why they didn't just say that, I'm not sure, but we know that Sparkle Smash is in the game. That is an original Spin Master design. And so, you know, what else could there be? Could we see the return of Yeti? A wildfire? I don't know, maybe, we'll see. The caption for this video also reads, unlock more than 140 liveries. I actually have mixed feelings about this. First off, let's talk about what is a livery. The short answer in this context is, it's a specific color scheme for a vehicle. So for example, El Toro Loco Black is an alternate livery for El Toro Loco. And it's one that I have no doubt will be one of the 140 unlockable liveries in Showdown. In fact, you can see one of these unlockable liveries in the next video in the form of this blue Bakugan Dragonoid. Bakugan Dragonoid Ice, maybe? Now, don't get me wrong, 140 color variants with 60 trucks on average is slightly more than two variants per truck. Now, I'm sure that some trucks are gonna have more, some trucks are gonna have less, but still, two variants per truck on average is a great deal. But unfortunately, nothing has been talked about as far as customization goes. And none of the footage that we've seen so far indicates that we're gonna be able to mix and match color and paint schemes. So the dreams of putting a maxi fire on a Gravedigger Ice chassis probably is not gonna happen. What is great about this clip though, is that we see Pirate's Curse waving his flag behind its truck. This gives me hope that maybe we can have different flag options to choose from, but perhaps not. This might just be Pirate's Curse's standard loadout, and we just haven't seen any other trucks with flags yet. Gravedigger, anyone? So I'm not really holding my breath. Still, it's a great looking flag, and I really hope that they do add flags to more trucks. Also to note though, you do get a quick glimpse of Kraken off to the left, in this video, it's really, really exciting to see more and more options coming to fruition. I cannot wait to play this game. The caption for this video talks about gaining boosts for smashing through destructibles. And indeed, if you look at the top of the screen, you can see the player gaining points for smashing into crates and fences, as well as for overtaking his opponents. In fact, he gets triple points for overtaking all three in a short amount of time. You can see his purple boost meter also fills with blue boost juice as he performs tricks like drifting, smashing objects, and overtaking his opponents. Just a couple more things to note in this video. At first glance, it appears that the blue Bakugan has blue sidewalls on the tires, but if you look closely, the tires are actually caked with mud and probably are actually solid blue. I don't mind it either way, but I know some of you really don't like those solid colored tires. 
And finally, you can see on the back of Crustacean is written a monster lobster, which I think is a nice touch in my opinion. The next new video on the website is of Lucas Stabilizer doing a backflip off of a backflip container in the middle of this huge stadium. Now, I've seen some folks online complaining about the apparent scale of the stadium as being too large, and I definitely can see what they mean in this video. The stadium seems to have a lot of open space, and the scale of the ramps are gigantic compared to your truck. Hopefully, though, they have some time before August, and this could get tweaked a little bit before release. Uh, I have a feeling, though, that this is probably a representation of what they have in mind for the scale of the stadiums. Uh, it's probably just what we're gonna have to deal with. That's okay, I'm sure it'll be fun no matter what. The other complaint that I've seen is the colorful blackout tarps that are covering the unused seats for safety. In real Monster Jam events, they're covered with, uh, you know, Monster Jam and Monster Truck branded tarps. We've all seen them, we know what they look like. And the tarps in the game, they just don't look right. Personally, I don't mind them taking a more creative approach with the colors. I, I do wish that they had some sort of branding on the tarps, on the sidelines, and on the walls of the stadium. Even if they're just fake brands, you know, like uh, Super Duper Glue or, you know, Megalodon Marine Supply or something that, that makes it a little more true to life. Okay, on to the next video. This one shows Gravedigger and Earthshaker driving in what seems to be a head to head race. And guys, I think I have finally figured out what these crane things are. They're just holding up the arrows showing which way the truck turns. Why they need such a huge structure to hold up a sign is beyond me, but these colorful crane things are everywhere and they always have arrow signs in front of them, so that's gotta be what they're for. Anyway, we see Earthshaker coming around this sharp turn, then racing over the top of a jump, and we see some more signs floating in the air being held up by drones. Now, it took me a quick second to realize what these signs remind me of, but I think I've got it. It's the crazy cap sign from Mario Odyssey. It's the same color scheme and everything. There seems to be some lettering on the signs, but I can't make out what they say. Either way, Earthshaker gives Gravedigger a really low haircut, and then we cut to Gravedigger's perspective as he now lines up for what I believe is the same turn that Earthshaker started on. Now, this whole thing is a really short clip, and it's all chopped up, so I definitely could be wrong, but this head-to-head -head seems to me like it's a race in a figure-eight pattern track. More on that in just a moment. The caption for this video reads, Start your career in the Showdown Tour, a non-linear adventure across various game modes. So, what does non-linear mean? Basically, it just means that you'll have some choice as to how you progress through career mode, and presumably in which order you unlock your trucks. It goes on to read, Beat your opponent opponents and defeat the various bosses you encounter along the way to unlock new trucks and liveries. Bosses? Really? That sounds interesting to me, but it also sounds more like a story mode than a career mode. And I imagine there's probably going to be a lot of folks out there that are not going to be happy with that. It does seem that similar to Steel Titans 2, career mode is going to be the primary means of unlocking trucks and liveries. No word yet if there's going to be a playground mode like in Steel Titans 2, where the achievements are disabled, but all of the trucks are unlocked. For those of you who don't know, playground mode was basically just for parents who wanted to set their little kids up with their favorite trucks without having to go through all of the career mode and unlocking nonsense. They just wanted to have their kids play around with their favorite trucks. Now, I don't think the playground mode is going to be something that's going to be in the game out the gate, but hey, you know what? If it's something you're interested in, I'm sure if they get enough requests, it's something they could add to the game later on. All right, so let's talk about game modes. The press release last month mentioned that there are going to be 10 game modes featured in the game, and now they've actually all been given a name. Some of them are what you'd expect. We've got head-to-head -head racing, freestyle, and circuit racing, best trick, which just based on the title, I think I'm going to like that more than two-wheel skills mode from Steel Titans. Figure eight racing, which as I mentioned, is likely going to be just a head-to-head -head race, but on a modified figure eight track. Then we have some Something called Horde Mode, which, uh, what? <laughs> okay, so if you don't know, Horde Mode in other games is where you have waves of enemies swarm in to attack you. Your job is to survive a number of waves, and if you do, you get big rewards at the end. It's very satisfying and very fun, but I have no idea how this is going to work in a monster truck game. The only thing I can compare it to are some of the missions in LEGO 2K Drive that had you driving over swarms of robots, which, you know, admittedly was actually quite fun and satisfying. I can see a mode where you're drifting over swaths of zombies driving as zombie, and that being an absolute blast. We'll have to to see exactly how this mode turns out, but I, I honestly have some high hopes for it. I think it might be fun. 
Then there's survivor mode. And we've actually already seen this in Hot Wheels Unleashed 2. This is the mode where the person in last place gets eliminated every 30 seconds until there's only one winner. It adds a bit of excitement and kind of this ticking clock, which I'm sure will add a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. Next, there's something called treasure hunting mode, which uh, like survival mode, apparently it's online only. Now, I'm not positive how this is gonna work, but I imagine you'll have a series of items or waypoints for you to discover within a certain amount of time. Think like an Easter egg hunt or something like that. And whoever discovers the most waypoints wins the match. It sounds interesting, but eh. It probably won't be the most popular online mode out of the 10. Then we have the two apparently single player only extreme freestyle and head to head modes. Honestly, I have no idea what extreme means. It could mean that the AI is extremely difficult. It could mean that there are extreme power ups. Uh, rocket boost, missiles, lasers, anti-gravity, who knows? I'm excited to find out what extreme means, but it does seem weird that it's offline and single player only though. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. No word yet on cross-platform compatibility, which makes me a little nervous, but honestly with so many of these modes being online, I just have to believe that crossplay is being considered Otherwise, the online community will just fall apart like it did with Steel Titans. Okay, I think that's all I have for you guys right now. If you check out the Milestone TikTok account, there is actually some cool footage that's being added all the time, including some shots of Alien Invasion, Northern Nightmare, and Megalodon going through the infamous cave that Zombie banged his head on that you can actually see in my first trailer breakdown. I'll link up at the top right. There's also some short clips of Showdown that appear during breaks in the official Monster Jam live streams that have been happening recently. Overall, it's not a whole lot of new footage, but hey, leave a comment. And let me know if you want me to do breakdowns on the footage that we do have. I'm all for it. Until then, though, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out the video that you see on your screen right now. And hey, we'll see you guys on the flip side later. Bye, everybody.